Hi everyone and welcome along. Last time we had a go at painting a hydrangea from my book New Botanical Painting. Well today we are going to build upon that and put those hydrangeas into a vase and do a lovely composition. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, we are going to build upon the tutorial we did last time um, using my book, New Botanical Painting. This is my very um, battered working copy. Um, and we painted the hydrangea from the book. Uh, here it is on page 46, 47. And I thought what might be really nice is to take this project and, and put it into a nice composition so that you can see once you've learned how to master these flowers from the book you can actually turn them into nice cards and paintings so we're going to do a vase of hydrangeas so I'm going to begin by just penciling in some of the sort of basic shapes um, a vase it's, it's the most important thing really for me is getting the nice shape of the flowers so what I'm going to do is I want to get the the pom-poms of the hydrangeas in uh, I think that's probably what we're going to go for um, we don't want it too symmetrical to even because we'll also have some leaves and things coming out but so I've just got a few sort of loose almost like potato shapes um, and then from there just imagining the stems coming down which then means I can house them in a nice vase. I'm going to do a glass vase because that's a fun painting skill to get so if we all get ourselves to the point where we've got some basic ball shapes, basic vase shape we can do away with our pencil and get painting. I have just woken up some permanent rose in my palette as well as some cobalt violet and some sap green. Those are the three colours I'm going to use for my composition. I've got a nice size zero brush which will be nice for making petals um, because this tutorial, well this, this project is a little bit smaller in scale than our hydrangea that I painted from the book. So we're going to begin by putting in these petals. Um, if you haven't already had a look at the tutorial of painting that hydrangea from last week then I highly recommend that you do because you will see me go through this on even in even greater detail on a slightly larger scale which is really really handy because this painting technique is one that we do all the way through so I will also obviously talk you through what I'm doing now so I'm creating pairs of little sort of I, I refer to them as spade shapes, like a spade and a pack of cards. Um, we're doing little pairs of petals to build up the, uh, we're basically filling up each hydrangea pom-pom. And by doing this, we are, we are gradually building up all the little flowers that you get in a hydrangea, but we're doing it in quite a clever, loose controlled way that means we, are, we finish with a beautiful sort of full pom-pom of petals that have all been painted in a defined and individual manner. Um, so they all get painted quite loose, you know, lots of water in here, but each time we paint one, we move on to somewhere with a little bit of space from it so that the previous ones can dry 100% and get that beautiful crisp papery edge which is what I strive for in so many of my sort of paintings in this loose controlled style. So once I've painted in the d diluted permanent rose petal I then drop in a dab of sap green into each one and just let it blend in. I don't touch it because pink and green are on opposite sides of the colour wheel. That means they're complementary colours, but that means essentially uh, they can either work extremely harmoniously if, if sort of handled with great care, but if you put them together, either both very sort of concentrated and strong, 
or you try and sort of over mix the two colours together, you'll end up with a rather disastrous result of sort of muddied colour and, and warring colours really. So we're just very delicately dropping in that green and you can see in the first few that I painted, it's just about managed to sort of blend beautifully but keep itself to itself and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go through all the pom-poms and I'm going to fill them up with these pairs of petals and I am, you can see sort of towards the edge of the hydrangea pom-pom, the petal shape is a little bit squashed, it's a little bit flattened just to give the sense of the roundness of the hydrangea flower. I've chosen permanent rose and cobalt violet as my colours for my hydrangeas. Um, cobalt violet is a colour that is not in a huge amount of people's palettes, it's a bit of a niche colour, but of course you can mix yourself a lovely purple using any of your pink tones and any of your blue tones together. As well as adding in the green, you could also mix it up a bit with your colours and um, you don't have to just stick with that because if you look at hydrangeas, uh, photos of hydrangeas, there are so many variations. Um, but what I want to do is just have a go at doing it with the one colour. So I've got my very dilute cobalt purple. And then I'm going to just wake up a much more concentrated bit of it just like this and do some like that as well because I think that's really pretty so just really make sure that you start off with a very dilute petal just so you're really getting the benefit of the contrast So, and then get that other colour in there. Doing pieces like this, it's all about enjoying, enjoying the repetition and seeing that as therapeutic rather than frustrating to want to get to the end quickly. Um, watercolour is so relaxing and even when I'm teaching like this and I'm, I'm doing it sort of to a deadline, just being able to get lost in a piece like this, doing the same thing over and over is actually a real treat in our very busy lives. So I do encourage you to make the most of this time you've given yourself to do some painting or even if you're just watching and you like watching painting and don't actually have any need to have a go yourself that's absolutely fine too. Uh, a little smudge there I'll just cover that over. And hey presto. So I'm just going to fill up these last two uh, ball shapes with the pairs of petals. Meanwhile, the ones I've previously painted are drying beautifully and you can see all those lovely crisp edges and translucent painted petals that are, are working really beautifully. And we will start to add the second layer. Now we've got a full set, we just need to go in and add the remaining petals. So back to the first one with the pale dilute permanent rose and a little bit of sap green. It's very important when you're doing the pink and green or the purple and green to clean off your brush really well um, after you've added the green because if you were then to stick 
a brush that had green on it into the pink your pink would start to really muddy whereas sticking the pink brush so here we go so i just paint my pink in you can get away with it a bit more going straight into the green even though if you can remember to clean your brush off every single time you will have a much happier painting but let's face it we're all we're all human we might stick our brush in the wrong in the wrong place every now and then so if you are going to do it into the green after you've used the pink is probably a lot better and we're filling up the space now so we can see that there's only going to be room after we've put in the four petals of each one there's only going to be a little bit of room left and what we'll do then is add in just a few little petal filler shapes just to fill in the gaps we've now got full sets of petals but there's still plenty of gaps so now I'm going to go back to the first one I painted in and just look for places where I can fill in with petals I'm going to try and sort of paint around the ones I've already painted in just so there isn't too much sort of overlap and confusion because of course when you're painting in translucent colours um, they're all going to be able to show up underneath each other but actually because there's so much going on in a hydrangea flower I prefer to try and keep them just sort of painted around each other so you can see here I'm just painting in the gaps looking for spaces and a little bit of white space is absolutely fine but we just want to try and get a nice full sphere of the hydrangea flower. And there we have a lovely bunch of hydrangeas. So let's have a look at the vase. So I'm going to paint a, a shadowy mix vase and we're going to do it fairly loose and we just need burnt sienna and I'm using French ultramarine blue as my blue tone. Just making up a nice grey there. I've also got Payne's Grey in my palette these days, which is quite a lovely petroly blue, which might be handy as well. And also I'm going to get some sap green ready for some stems in the water. So I've got a size 2 brush and I'm going to begin by just placing in the sort of loose outline of the vase. And you see, I really used the thickness of my brush there to get a nice expressive stroke, which gives us a nice excuse to broaden out that line. So it's not so much an outline, it is very much part of the makeup of the glass vase okay I'm looking for little uh, bits of unpainted space in this vase here which is uh, creating a sense of uh, reflected light bouncing off the vase so I'm now going to place in a sort of water line in a, a rough sort of oval shape there and might just with a clean wet brush Draw it down a little bit, blend it in a tiny bit. And then a little bit of darker colour coming down underneath because there's a little bit of shadow essentially, a bit of darkness in there. And now I'm going to take my sap green and I'm just going to sort of sweep it up in a quite a 
a loose dilute style and just sort of see what happens really, see what we get. Just picturing the, the stem going into the flower. Very happy with that. So I'm just gonna let that dry entirely. And then, because this is quite nice and dilute, it means we can place in sepals and leaves and uh, get a really nice composition. The piece is now completely dry. This was also a great time to just lightly rub out any pencil you could see. So I've done that using my kneadable eraser. And now it's time to add in some sepals and leaves. So I'm just getting some sap green here and I might just add a little green gold in there maybe to lift it a little bit. You could always use a bit of cadmium yellow. And I'm going to go back to using my size zero brush just for a bit more control. So for sepals, they're just the little um, bits of green sort of just poking down from the top, uh, from underneath, I beg your pardon, the flower. So we're only going to see a few of those. So using the belly of the brush, just use sap green and then I can just use the brush to just flick out the colour a little bit more, make a little bit of texture. But then we're going to definitely see some leaves and we can pop some of these up in here and I actually might have one just sort of coming up and overlapping in front of that purpley one there. And because we painted our hydrangeas nice and dilute, we can get a nice coverage there. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of Payne's Gray to define, get a little bit of darkness. And in fact, I will do that on those as well because they're still a little wet. have a leaf coming off here. So two C curves that just taper off into a fine point and then you can just use the paint that's already on the page and a little bit of Payne's Grey and you can also just use that to just to find the edge a little bit more. So I'm just going to now fill in a few more leaves and that little bit of unpainted space that gets left down the middle is great to just give you a loose sense of, of leaf detail but not too much because this is quite a a loose styled piece. So you can pop in as many or as few leaves as you like. I quite like having them sort of coming up in between the flowers and then you can just sort of use that edge of the petals to neaten that up a little bit. I rather like that, even though it's sort of a little uh, on the wonk. I'm, yeah, I'm very pleased. So the last thing we could do is just pop in a little bit of shadow to those sort of underside sections. Not too much though, we don't want to make this too heavy a piece. But it can just really help bring out the sort of the roundness and it can also help show how the flowers are sort of interacting with each other with the light and with everything else. And 
And last but not least, we'll just do a little bit of extra darkness sort of on the base of the vase. Just coming down there. All I can say with the vase, it seems a bit of a daunting one if you're if you're new to painting in loose style watercolour. Just play around and know that I too don't really have much of a plan when I'm painting a vase like this, but I'm just looking uh, at where I can see sort of, I want to have bits of light reflecting off. We've obviously got the roundness of the shape, a line of water, but there you go, uh, a use for your hydrangea tutorial from New Botanical Painting. Pop it in a lovely vase and there you go, a really nice composition. Thanks so much for watching. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.